everyone and welcome to episode 10 Yay, episode 10 of the whatnot podcast my name is Kathy I am a disabled maker after a car accident in 2007 I am an incomplete quadriplegic and this is a podcast about all the crafty things that I get into and uh, yeah sometimes there's quite a few of them but anyway, let's get into it. So first off, a big, big thank you to everybody that binged watched all my podcasts in the last two weeks. There's been a few of you and I've really appreciated all the lovely feedback and the comments and the interaction that I've had with you guys. It's been really good. So thanks very much for that. I really appreciate it. And all the new subscribers as well. We had quite a few new subscribers and I think we can thank Needles at the Ready. So thanks Kevin and Ray for continuing to shout me out every so often. And a few of you have come over from there. And also Lindsay from Stitch Create Love. A few of you have come over from her podcast to check this little podcast out. So if you are watching me and you haven't watched... Um, Kevin and Ray and Lindsay, go and check their podcasts out as well because I always watch them, I really enjoy them and yeah, I think that you guys might as well. Alright, what am I wearing today? So today I have got on my Porto sweater which is by Kirsten Finley and I she is an Australian designer and uh, I actually did a cowl to knit this jumper and I don't know whether the stitch pattern is showing up really well but it's really got some nice texture to it, to it. it's fully textured all over and I've got a slight um, oversized boxy shape to it this is going to be a running theme I always seem to knit things too big for myself I don't know why that is uh, but I do um, and I probably could have gone down a size in this, but I'm still quite comfortable wearing it. Um, the yarn is Yarn by Jane, and the colour is Saltbush. And it's a lovely creamy, creamy um, colour with very, very slight tan and green, greenish teal speckles to it. So I don't know if that's showing up really well, but... Um, I actually ran out of wool uh, just as I hit the bottom half of the body and quickly got in touch with Jane and said, you know, I noticed you haven't got any more in stock. Could you quickly dye some up for me? And she did and post haste got it out to me and I used every single bit of those two skeins that I bought as well. So it took quite a bit of um, knitting on this jumper. It is, I believe it's a... It's a, it's a sports to eight ply was the, the the yarn size that I used. So, but I wear this quite a bit. Uh, yeah, I really like it. So that's that. Now, I don't have any knitted finished objects for you this week. I was hoping to get Mills Ursa finished, but I ran out of wool. Yeah. So, not the Baroque strawberry. I've got plenty of that, but I ran out of the Cascade... 220 in black so I have been on I've ordered another skein of that which should be fine I finished the body I thought I won't worry about showing it to you this episode I'll show it to you in a fortnight's time and hopefully I haven't got the cascade black yet it hasn't arrived in the mail and I'm hoping it won't take too long to get here but uh, it's on its way and it's not alone I did buy a couple of other things which I'll show you when they come in but I do have a, a finished object for you and I gave a little hint to this on my Instagram and my first finished object is this little owl purse that I've made. Really cute, cute stuff. That's the back of it. Uh, I followed, it's not really a tutorial, I've mentioned um, her before and it is uh, let me get this right Handy Mum Lynn TV and she really just does like a, a, a demonstration it's not a tutorial but I um, watched that 
I cut out my little pattern pieces so you really only needed these two pieces and I followed the picture that she had because she doesn't speak on these podcasts um, and I cut my bits out so that one is 10.5 by what was it six centimeters and that creates the section here as you can see it's the pieces that go there and the front of them fold around like so and the other piece here that I've cut out is five centimeters by 7.5 I'm just telling you this in case you'd like to have a go at this and that is the the flap part this is all hand sewn there's no machine sewing involved in this whatsoever uh, although I think you probably could but I did follow she put a nice little pink press stud on hers but um, I didn't have any press studs and I did have the velcro dots so I went the velcro dot option she was uh, demonstrating that she could keep you know your ear plugs for your iPod or things like that in here but I thought it'd be a great little notions pouch uh, for some stitch markers and things like that or even a little coin purse it's really solid and it's slightly padded and as I say I sewed it all up by myself by hand so I was pretty happy with that and I thought it turned out really cute and I tr I bought this fabric from Spotlight and it's a batik style fabric and I a couple of other ones that I had so I thought that they all went really well together so that's my first finished object so that's really nice I was really happy with that and my second finished object is my watercolor which Again, if you're following me on Instagram, you have seen this one. Uh, this was quite popular. Everybody really gave me some nice feedback on it. Uh, you all seem to enjoy that one. I have to tell you, I it wasn't my favourite. But the, you can't paint perfect every time. In the way I wasn't, what I wasn't happy with is this flower configuration just here I think I could have done a bit better but I'll just show it to you up close I think it still looks nice obviously and I'm overall I'm happy with it so that was my finished object uh, in my watercolor department and I will tell you that I have received my first commission for a watercolor so I know you watched the podcast, so thanks for that, Justin. I will be getting on to that pretty soon. Now, on the watercolour topic, I said in my last podcast that if we reach 300 subscribers, I would be doing another giveaway. Uh, we have. We, we've gone past 300 subscribers. So, yeah, that's really amazing. I can't believe that that many people want to watch but great, good. And as a thank you, I mentioned that this would be the giveaway. So we will be doing a giveaway for this uh, episode. And the winner will be receiving this watercolour that I painted a couple of weeks ago. And they will also be receiving the skein of yarn that I've dyed to match it. And a little stitch marker, which I have painted myself. So that's that one. And to be in the draw for this prize, I thought what would be a good thing to do is if you could put the sentence, my favourite flower is, and tell me what your favourite flower is. And then I will go through and put that in a random generator. Um, give every, I will allocate everybody a number, put it in a random number generator, and I will draw it out and announce the person who has won on the next podcast. Uh, I'm not going to put that in the title or that it, there's a prize on offer. 
because I want, as I've said in the past, I want one of my genuine watches to win that prize. And uh, so one of you guys will be getting that next fortnight. So stay tuned for that one. So that's that. Now, uh, my whips. I have been working on my Typhoon shawl and making really good progress. I am really enjoying this as a, it's an interesting construction actually to achieve the uh, striping to be consecutive and to, to achieve these uh, angles to be going in the same direction. It's uh, it's got an interesting construction, but I will say it's a mindless knit. So very convenient for watching TV and things like that, but interesting enough in that uh, you do have to think when you're changing your colours and setting up the next row to achieve this. And this is by Josh Rysk Robinskin, Robinski. Um, and I'll put his details in the show notes. But this shawl is being done to coincide with the Needles at the Ready cowl that they've got going on, which is the Let's Hear It For The Boys. And I mentioned a little bit more about that in my last podcast. And it's basically to shine a light on male designers, dyers, uh, anybody that you know patterns male patterns and things like that so the um, obviously my shawl here has been designed by a male and I was inspired to knit this because Caleb um, who is who also has a YouTube channel and I'll link his um, channel down below and he's the bearded pearl and he was wearing one he's actually knit two of these and I really liked it and I thought you know that's a great use of sock yarn and this is the this striping self striping here is tiny human knits and this one is just a gray one that I dyed up at one stage and yeah I'm really enjoying it really enjoying that and of course, my other knit that I've got on the needle still is the Ursa. So I will be getting on to that. Now, the other thing that I've made a little bit of progress on is my cross stitch. So I'm really, uh, I've done that, this, been working on this section here. And I'm about to go down and work on that bottom corner next. But I think it's turning out really well. As I told you when I first started doing this, it should be this way on the fabric. But uh, I went in with both guns blazing and put it the wrong way. But it still fits. It's just going to be a little snug on the edge there. But definitely still doable. And I've recently just got new lighting in my craft room so I now have an overhead light just here and um, I've bought the three magnification glasses and I'm having no trouble doing it now so that's the good news uh, so I'll be continuing to work on that and I'm hoping to have that finished pretty soon actually so I've been enjoying that so that's my whips. That's all I've got in terms of finished objects and whips. But next week I think I'll have my shawl finished and potentially the Ursa depending on whether that yarn arrives in time. So that's that. Now I mentioned on the last podcast that uh, the lovely Lindsay from Stitch Create Love and I are going to be doing a knit along for the Zweig. Uh, and I was tossing up what yarn to use and I mentioned to you that I may be using the whole scarn. So I wanted to bring the garment on that I have knit in whole scarn to show you how lovely it is once it's knit up. So this is the garment. It is a shrug. Let me get a good angle on that. It's a shrug. This is by Isabel Kramer and it is the Santa Fe. 
it's one of those items of clothing that look better when you're actually wearing it than when you're actually holding it up. I'll show you the back and you can actually wear this either way, upside down. You can wear the knitted section around your neck or the lace panel around your neck. There's, it can be worn upside down. But the bit that I wanted to show you mainly was the stitch definition on it with the holst garn. Now I will tell you that this has been held together with some Knit Picks Alpaca Cloud just so that I could achieve gauge but it it's the the Alpaca Cloud what colour have I written that down on my notes let me just check okay it's a the whole scarn is sweet pea uh, and the alpaca cloud is called charlotte so it it knit up beautifully they look nice together and this is a really great thing just to throw on if you're watching telly um if you've got to go down the street at night and do some shopping or something um just to keep warm and in terms of a shrug it really does wrap around nicely it's one of those ones that I actually finished knitting this and started contemplating knit casting another one straight off or straight on I mean I enjoyed it that much um, but what I did end up doing I thought hmm I'm about these shrugs I like the, I like a shrug so I went on Ravelry and I've actually downloaded I knit this quite some time ago and so I've downloaded these patterns quite some time ago um, but you know getting around to these things is another, th another thing isn't it but there are quite a few shrugs on Ravelry and I would definitely like to knit another one in the future they are really cozy and warm but uh, yep yeah, I'm a fan of the whole scarn uh, and I am keen to knit with it again uh, and I think it produces a really nice soft it's got um, an ever ever so slight woolly feel about it but not in that scratchy kind of offensive way at all it's really nice really nice so yeah I recommend that all right now uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, and I should have mentioned it when I was talking about the watercolours, is at the end of this video, uh, there is a tutorial that I've done, tutorial, I use the word loosely, uh, a demonstration that I've done on doing a watercolour with watercolour pencils. So if you're interested in that, I'll put this, the timestamp here. If you're not interested, obviously, just leave it and um, just watch to the end of this section but uh, if you are interested and a lot of you were interested the last time I did it uh, I am thinking if I do those sorts of tutorials in the future to post them as standalone videos but we'll see how that goes I'm I'm not sure how many of them I would actually do but that's on the end of this video and uh, Mill has a section now so I will put Mill's section in at this point and you can see what Mill's been up to. All right, I'll catch you shortly. Over to you, Mill. Hello, YouTube. Uh, I have to apologize in advance for the lighting. It is 5.27 p.m. and I did not record my video today like I told my mum I would. Uh, so... Sorry about it. Hopefully you can see everything that I'm trying to show you anyway and it's not too awful. And maybe even mum will put a little filter on it for me to make me look nicer. And like, I haven't, you know, just had a really long day at work. <laughs> oh well. Um, I've got a bunch of finished objects to show you. Well, a few anyway. Um, and I'm not going to dilly dally. I'm going to get straight into it because the lighting is really terrible. Um, and also because some of my finished objects are drawings and I want to be able to show you those at the end. So I will just go ahead and show you the crochet things that I've done. Um, so first is this cowl. 
that I made. Um, and actually the colours are showing up pretty well. That's pretty much exactly what the colours look like and I really like it. Um, I made this because my orange one that I wear all the time, I accidentally left at my friend's house. And I was really sad and cold. <laughs> so um, I made this one. And I made it sort of like extra long because it's quite thin. Um, and I would say that uh, it's probably a little bit a little bit thinner than 8-ply. Um, so I wanted it to sort of be a bit extra long so I could, you know, really like snug into it. Um, I also did, I didn't follow a pattern. I just, it's just... Um, it's just double crochet basically um, with some uh, crochet one chain one in between just for a bit of pattern or texture um, but I did do uh, an increase towards the top so um, it doesn't just sit like all down and fall into itself it actually kind of goes up like that so I don't know if you can see that yeah um, you can see that it does flare out a bit at the bottom so that was a nice quick one um, that was just in a um, an old ball of uh, acrylic that I had bought at Lingcraft um, and I can't remember what it was called but I'm pretty sure they don't sell it anymore so it doesn't matter. Uh, but I was happy with that one. The other thing I made um, was this. It is a rattle. Um, so I got this ring, um, it's just, came from Woolworths, it's just a, um, a teething ring, uh, that's got, like, water in it, it's one of those ones that you put in the fridge and then it's, like, soothing and cold, um, and I just bought that to make sure that it was actually sort of, like, you know, safe for babies, <laughs> baby quality, um, but I knew I was going to be crocheting it over, over it anyway. Um, this is all done in cotton, so, um, you know nice and easy to clean and nice and um sort of yeah like fresh and won't peel or anything like that um the colors are showing up pretty well actually this weird lighting that I've got going on um is kind of working out for real color so um again I just pretty much made up the pattern um for this one uh as I was going along um for the rattle I used the middle of uh, or like the eggs that come in Kinder Surprises um, and I just put some beads in there um, which are the beads that I use for amigurumi to make them a little bit um, like uh, bean bags um, and then I put tape around it so that it wouldn't you know um, come open and, and be damaging um, and then I stuffed around it with stuff with stuffing so it is a bit soft um, and hopefully won't break and will be nice and safe um, and the eyes are just cotton as well so nothing unsavory for small children <laughs> um, but I thought it was pretty cute and um, that's gonna be going to Harriet and another thing that's going to Harriet since Harriet's the only small child that I like she gets all the presents is this watermelon plushie which I also made um, up as I was going along, which was fun and exciting and quite surprising that it actually worked out. Um, this cotton, this is all cotton as well. This cotton at the top was actually cotton that mum and I dyed ourselves. So I was really excited to use that. Um, and I think it made it kind of like nice and a bit more interesting for the watermelon part. Um, and I also put a rattle inside that one the same way that I put inside the dog head um so yeah it worked out pretty cute um I think it's nice and bright colors and it's stuffed pretty firmly um with stuffing so it's like a plushie but you know over time sometimes the stuffing gets a bit softer so I just thought better to overstuff it um and yeah also again just all made out of cotton so probably pretty easy to just chuck in the wash well hopefully anyway um and will hopefully last forever so that's also for Harriet um now another thing for me is this that I wanted to show you 
So this is the, um, uh, what is it called? Taroko? Taroka or Taroko? Um, I'll put it in the show notes anyway. Um, and this is, if you saw my Instagram post about it, this is basically <laughs> my feeble attempt at following a pattern. Um, basically the only pattern that I actually followed on this is the ribbing for the neck and then the rest of it just got totally crazy. Um, so I decided that because I love this yarn so much um, and it was looking so beautiful, I think that's the back, uh, I didn't actually want to put the colour work into it. Um, I'll definitely do that another time because um, I'm interested and excited to do colour work. Um, but uh, I didn't... I didn't want to do that in this one. I, I just wanted it to be all the proper, like the colour that this yarn is. So I didn't do the colour work. And then also I did not do the lace work the way that the pattern described. Um, because, and for another thing that I didn't do the way the pattern described, um, because I used yarn that was a lot thicker um, and a hook that was a lot bigger than they recommended. So I'm actually making this for myself in like four sizes smaller than the pattern recommended um so i should be making a 3x and i'm making a medium um and like i feel like it's still gonna be pretty roomy actually um so but i'm really excited to see how it turns out uh i haven't joined together for the sleeves yet but i think that's coming up very shortly might just see if I can stick it on. So I made the neck sort of like nice and big because I don't want to be choked by my jumper. Um, and yeah, I think that's just sort of almost ready. Uh, a couple more rows and then I'll, I'll join for the sleeves there. So we'll see how it goes. Um, aside from one other jumper that I made, which is in my Etsy store, um, I haven't really made a jumper for myself, um, and I kind of feel like every time I make them, maybe I won't like them <laughs> in the end, um, and I'm always sort of, kind of starting to feel that way with this one, um, because now that I actually put it on, I'm like, well, it's quite rainbow, and maybe I got a bit carried away, and I should have done the colour work in just, like, a plain colour, but <sighs> you live and learn, and... It's a fun pattern. Um, I've learnt this new stitch and I think it's really beautiful. Um, you know, obviously it's crochet, but it looks like knitting or a little bit like knitting anyway. Um, and I really like the colours. I think the colours are beautiful. So either way, I will wear this or hopefully someone will wear this one day. One day when I eventually finish it. Um, and... One other thing that I started on is another uh, little rattle. So that was one of the teething rings that I just bought from the supermarket. And I've made this little cat. And what I'm going to do is I've made him a little tail. And I'm just going to sew that around there um, so that that is basically... A little plush cat on the end of a teething ring just something a bit different um I had a lot of big projects going on and I um was really busy at work and I just wanted to just do something small and you know colorful and low-key <laughs> so um that's that's been that one and and that one have been really nice little projects just to work on in between things um and that's pretty much it. Uh, I, like I said, I've been really busy with work. Um, I'm a member of the Animal Justice Party and uh, we have elections coming up. And I just spoke to um, one of my friends at the Animal Justice Party and I'm going to be helping them out with um, some design uh, stuff for their, you know, um, campaign and uh, like their flyers and those sorts of things um, and also with their digital advertising so um, Facebook advertising and stuff for their 
um, election campaign. So that's going to be lots of work, but I'm really excited to do that because um, obviously that's a cause that's really important to me. And I've helped them out a lot in the past and we have fun. It's like, I find um, elections are very exciting because I'm a giant nerd. And um, yeah, like it's just, I, I like the I like the process of being really, really, really busy um, and working with a purpose, like really working towards a goal. Um, and I think because inevitably um, elections are really sort of, not disorganized, but like, regardless of where you are or who you're helping out, um, things get left to the last minute, you know, there's just so much to do. Um, and I think that, uh, well, I've just started to realise um, something I probably should have realised a long time ago, but I perform better under pressure. <laughs> like, if I leave things to the last minute, um, I definitely kind of enjoy it more and, um, you know, work harder at it. So yeah, an election is very exciting. So I'm really excited to work on that um, and help those guys out again. Um, and yeah, aside from that, I think that um, you've seen probably a lot of the crochet that I will be doing for the next couple of months. Um, I think I'll be quite busy otherwise, but um, I have recently done a few commission drawings and put a lot more drawings on my social media. So I'll pop a couple of those um, at the end of the video and yeah, check them out. If you like them, let me know. Um, I really like doing commission drawings. So uh, if you're interested in getting a drawing commissioned, again, just send me a message. I would be more than happy to discuss it. Um, but anyway, thanks guys. Good to see you again. Hope you're all well and staying safe. And um, yeah, hopefully see you again in a couple of weeks. Bye. enjoyed that thanks Mill thanks very much I know it's been a bit difficult for you to squeeze that into your schedule so uh, I hope everybody enjoys that now to my Etsy store this week well actually I'll quickly show you my uh, scrapbooking efforts on my episodes oh, one of my pieces just fell out just stick him back in there and this is my book this week so I've got uh, all my my purchase things on that side and my show notes and all my little stickers and look at that little piggy at the bottom how cute is he so that's my scrapbooking efforts this week <laughs> look it keeps me out of trouble what can I say and uh, the little slogan on the side there says for some moments in life there are no words I like those little um, little quotes here and there every so often all right now uh, so my Etsy seller this week it's a really interesting one that I've got for you guys and this is Lucy Mamone and she is an artist she's based in Sydney and uh, she's an illustrator so she has an Etsy store and I'll put her Etsy store name in which is Lucy M D uh, M draws Lucy M draws and the couple of items that I've purchased from her I purchased three items two bookmarks so this is one of the bookmarks the beautiful colors in that and this is actually I believe this has been laser printed her preferred medium that she likes to draw in are coloring pencils and digital painting and then she transfers these but these are actually a slither of timber these bookmarks so really beautiful and I paid the grand total of five dollars for that and I think that's really lovely so 
I bought that one which might be a gift for somebody that I know that likes cats and I bought this one because you know I like the foxes beautiful illustrations such fine detail and great choice of colors so that one was also five dollars and I also picked up a key ring so I got this key ring on my face super cute really nice and the back of it's got hats on it like a mad hatter and the words on it say you're entirely bonkers but I'll tell you a secret all the best people are so super adorable and I totally love it she has illustrated for a book uh, the book that she had illustrations in is The Princess and the Pirate by Felicity Banks and I'll put a picture of that book here and if you're interested in checking it out at all you can pick it up on Amazon I don't have the book uh, but um, yeah so she has done one illustration and I believe she's currently working on illustrations for another book and a comic series so really interesting and she sent me uh, some lovely stickers as well and also that little card there came with it with a nice little note which uh, basically thanking me for the purchase but uh, I will tell you that she has 28 sales on her Etsy store so considering the quality of that work um, I'm surprised that her sales are so low her prices are so reasonable you do pay postage but it's a very minimal postage so if you're interested in that go and check Lucy out all right now the other purchases that I've made yes I did buy some more Lulian the self striping I cannot help myself what can I say I mean how beautiful how lovely are these let me get them in focus there we go so nice um, kind of a purpley pink with some tealy green and this is the warmer tone one with the oranges like the saffron yellows and teals really pretty I'm going to enjoy knitting those up I tell you one of these balls of yarn would look great in that typhoon shawl just an idea just saying so thanks guys Louise and Deb another another great job they uh, upload onto their Etsy store nearly every Saturday uh, so if you are interested in some beautiful self striping yarn go and check it out uh, I've also been to spotlight again and I picked up some fabrics so let me just arrange these so that you can see them I got this set I picked up two of each color uh, I hope they're showing up nicely uh, I just thought that they were nice colors and um, I got two of each the special that they've got going is 10 of these fat quarters for $25 so I thought that was a good deal and I also spied this lovely fabric so picked that up as well just thought that was pretty so I got two of those and the other thing the after doing that little owl purse it sort of spiked my interest in I mean I do have quite a lot of fabric off cuts and things like that so it spiked my interest in, in a bit of uh, paper piecing so I have picked up they were also running 30% off these and I thought oh that's a sign I need to buy some so I bought two packets of these and I was watching uh, So Ray Me the other day and normally when you if anybody doesn't know paper piecing you put the fabric on you've got to tack it on and then you sew them together and she was saying that you can buy a sewing glue that you can use to eliminate that step 
which I was all about. So I've already purchased that, hasn't arrived. I've bought that off eBay and I'll show it to you when that arrives. But yeah, I'm interested to give that a go at some point. And the last thing that I had to show you that I bought, I picked this book up. I mean, first off, how lovely is that cover? That's just delicious to look at, isn't it? Look at those colours. So inspiring. And this is a really good book because it's one of those books that you can just pick up, flip to any page if you've only got a couple of minutes and read a little bit of, of a page. And it's got some interesting ideas to stimulate your creativity. Uh, it's got some beautiful photos in it which are also a feast for the eyes and I have actually been inspired on a couple of these pictures for some up-and-coming yarn color combinations because I just think they look so good but I've picked out a couple of pages in particular to show you I mean first off what about that for a colour yarn with sort of that pale warm grey with that lovely sort of coral, deep coral colour. I thought that would be a nice, a nice yarn. But I liked the saying on this page and it said, It is simply this. Do not tire. Never lose interest. Never grow indifferent. Lose your invaluable curiosity and you let yourself die. It's as simple as that. And I think that is so true. So there's a few little quotes in this book that really are nice. I liked that picture on this side, sorry, this side here. Um, the color combinations that in there, the pale blue, sandy with the, the, the green and the pop of red. I just, these are extremely inspiring to me in terms of uh, colour combinations for yarn. So here's another one which I thought was nice. This one in here. Look at all those lovely colours together. And there's a few like activities in here that she suggests like going for a walk and not taking any devices with you like no music uh, no iPhone and things like that to be snapping photos and really look at your surroundings really you know even just the smallest dead leaf on the ground like really absorb be there in the moment like live in the moment and in and really interact with your surroundings which I think that, uh, you know, and I'm as guilty as anybody because I'm always on my iPad, you can lose that. And I, this book's really inspired me to, to notice things. I, I mean, I am fairly detail oriented anyway, but I do, I do think it's interesting to read some of the exercises and try them out. One of the things she said was, pick a color at the beginning of the day, say it's red, and when you're walking around your house doing things, anything that you see that is red, a crayon, a mug, you know, a post-it note, a magnet, anything, just gather them all on a tray and at the end of the day, see what you've got and you could take a photo of it. And she's actually done that in this book. And I thought that's an interesting little activity because it actually... You know, when you've got little bits and pieces around your house, uh, sometimes you don't see them anymore and it makes you really re-engage with your surroundings. So I thought that was interesting too. But I also liked that picture even just as again, like I was thinking it in terms of yarn, but the lovely greens with the lavenders, the different shades of lavender in that, really nice. And if you notice that section is called scent and smell. So there's little activities in there to help you engage in, well, engage your scent, like what what you can do to reopen your mind. So I really enjoyed that book. 
again it's not a massive book so I like that you could put that in your purse even and if you're sitting somewhere waiting with the kids after school or a doctor's office you could have a little read of that but it's it's a really enjoyable little book I'm glad I picked that one up and I think that's everything I think so uh, I've had a busy week we uh, I think I told you last time we've been having a few things done I had the electrician here all yesterday afternoon uh, so I've had some two new down lights put in here my husband's had them put in the study oh, it's like a breath of fresh air having that much light um, I was supposed to have my floors done in my bedroom on Tuesday and they pulled all the carpet up and realized that the floor was not in great shape uh, so they couldn't lay the floors so instead of us sort of moving out that morning Mark and my husband Mark and I got up at four o'clock in the morning so that he could clear the bedroom out before he went to work and the idea was we'd put it all back and we'd be back in that room that night no no that hasn't worked out uh, so we've sort of been my house is in total disarray which I hate uh, and the all the contents of the bedroom are in the living area some of it's even outside I mean I'll be glad when everything's back where it's supposed to be and I will take a picture of my lovely new bedroom floor when it actually goes down but I've had the concreters here this morning to re-skim the bedroom and um, the floor guy is due back on Friday so he was a lovely fella his mum knit him a hat he had a beanie on and I was I said to him straight away I love your beanie he's like my mum's a knitter I'm like hello uh, let me hook you up with some yarn so I gave him some yarn and I said to him if you're lucky your mum might knit you another beanie so he was stoked uh, so that's that but apart from that I'm hoping next week I'll be able to get my Zen back on and refocus in terms of shop news uh, I am closing the shop at the end of this month for one month just to have a little bit of a rest and catch up make a few things and on the 1st of August I will have a reopening uh, with some new yarn colors and and I'm hoping to incorporate uh, I don't want to be gender specific but a few more manly type colors like I am going to continue with the pastel shades I would there are a few male knitters that are following me now and I want to cater to they, them as well some you know some lovely greens some uh, lovely uh, mustardy yellows and browns and things like that so I'm hoping to uh, delve into that area of my creativity a bit more as well and cater for uh, the male gender shall we say although you know each to their own you wear pastel if you want to wear pastel go for it if you if you don't whatever I am non-judgmental on that department so uh, yes yeah, so I will be shutting the shop however if anybody is looking for a custom order during that time hit me up on on Instagram DM me uh, a few of you have done that I have done quite a few custom dye uh, jobs lately and I'm more than happy to do that so I will be prepared to do that over July but other than that I'll be having a break and getting my my needles cleared off and ready to go with Lindsay on the 1st of August on that note if any of you are interested in joining Lindsay and I please leave some comment down in the comments section because I believe we do have a few, we we are talking about some prizes um we are talking about setting up a revelry page and when i say i'm talking about it i'm talking about it here and lindsay's talking about it on her podcast we need to talk to about about it with each other to iron out some of the fine details so lindsay and i'll be in touch in the next couple of weeks i would say but she is talking about if there is enough interest setting up a revelry page so I will let you know on the next podcast some of the more finite details uh, with regard to that 
Uh, and I think that's about it, guys. I am really enjoying the podcast. It's really motivating for me to see uh, the comments and the numbers going up and people enjoying it, commenting on the fact that they enjoy it. So I really appreciate it. I appreciate you all. You are all welcome. Um, I have no discrimination against anyone. Uh, I think we all know what's going on in the world at the moment. I'm totally horrified by the whole thing. And um, on that note, my husband and I have been educating ourselves as basically white privileged people that we are uh, and the horrors that uh, some people are inflicted upon some people. It's just disgusting. So um, my views are very much on Black Lives Matter, of course. So that's that but I will be looking forward to catching up with everybody in the next fortnight don't forget to enter the watercolor competition uh, so that we can have a chance to for everybody to win something so yeah all right I'll leave it there just waffling on now and I will see you soon bye okay so today I thought I would do another picture out of the watercolour with me in the forest by Dana Fox but this time I thought I would try something a little bit different. Uh, one of my subscribers was unable to get watercolour paint so uh, she went ahead and got some watercolour pencils. Now I have watercolour pencils and I have got these ones these are by derwent derwent watercolor and i seem to have two different types so these are the reexcel derwents and these are just the derwents so uh, they're both watercolor and the way you can tell is it actually has watercolor written on them there and on the box so uh, these might be an option for somebody that doesn't want to buy watercolor paints but I thought I would give you a demonstration on how they work and I'll be honest I I used to use these quite a bit but I haven't used them for a while so I went ahead and did a little sample one yesterday just to make sure that I knew what I was doing <laughs> so this is the picture of the one that Dana has done the, the green tree frog and we have a lot of these green tree frogs in our backyard, which is nice. But uh, that was the picture. And this is the one I completed yesterday using the watercolour pencils, just to refresh myself. So uh, you can end up with quite a good result. I would say it's not the same as watercolour paint, but obviously still gives you a great effect. So, the picture that I've selected for today, I've marked it. Now, I've done a few of these in here now. And I thought I might try these flowers. So, these are flowers that Dana has done in the book. And this is the colour palette here that she recommends. Uh, I may or may not go with those. We'll see how it how we travel along here. As usual I have a glass of clean water, I have got a piece of kitchen towel, I have got my size 12 Princeton Select round brush and I used the other day which I thought worked quite well I used my mono drawing pen which is a water based pigment ink marker and these are really handy I think I bought mine in a pack of three and they came in different sizes the one that I'm using today is the zero one Posty's just been so let's hope the dogs can keep it on the down low all right so I'll just move this across so I won't cover that up so we can still have a a little peekaboo at that. Just getting this into a good position so everybody can see it. All 
Alright, so I think what I'll start off with is um, I like to blend a few colours together to give it a realistic look. So what I think I will do first off is just put it, and I, I did this really roughly the other day and you don't need to be precise. So let's just get some colour in at the base of those and I will say I to get a deeper colour I am pressing reasonably firmly and what I did yesterday was you know really I basically just randomly coloured the picture in and then went over it with the water so we'll do one flower at a time and this one's going to have sort of an orangey uh, splaying out to potentially a a goldy yellow. I'm going to choose a slightly darker colour. So this is terracotta. Let's see what colour was that one. This is called pale vermilion. So just in the centres there. And you can see I'm not doing anything precise, just getting that colour on there at this point. And uh, I, I really enjoyed doing this yesterday because I have done quite a bit of colouring in in the past uh, and I have quite a lot of colouring in books which I like. Well, I used to do them quite a lot but I haven't done them for quite a while now. So now I'm going to go for a lighter colour and this is Naples Yellow. And I'm just going to put a little bit of that colour on the tip say when I used these yesterday uh, I haven't used them for ages I haven't sharpened them and they still colored in quite well they hadn't dried out or any problems like that so that was handy they're not as creamy I would say as regular watercolor paints Like I said before, you really just want to get that colour on the page because once you add the water, it sort of starts to blend together. I don't know if any of you remember, but when I was a little girl, uh, you used to be able to get these colouring books that had um, like a, a pigment on the page and you'd add water and they were a lot of fun. Kind of like that. So now I've just grabbed my brush and literally I found yesterday that you need to add plenty of water so I haven't even dried that off. That's actually just about to drip. So we'll start off at the base and I will say that I kind of worked out yesterday that it's better if you're painting um, in a couple of areas to paint from well, I'm here I'm painting from dark to light, but yesterday I found it easier to paint from light to dark. But I just want to get a bit of water on there to begin with. Get a bit more water. And then I'll start from the top. Just so I don't mix those colours too much and lose that yellow pigment on the edge there. Water. And then just where they meet, just tap a little bit of water on and they will bleed together themselves. Just rinse my brush a bit more there. Going back on those lighter areas. And a dab to get the colours to blend. Now that could not be easier, I don't think. Just fill in any little holes you want. If you don't feel like they've blended out enough, just, just tap it on with a bit more water. Now, the other thing that you can do with these pencils, and I tried out yesterday. I've got a bit of a frog in my throat, unfortunately, but I'll try and get through that. I'm going to go in with a brown okra. And what I did yesterday was dip the tip of this directly in the water. So that's now wet and then you can just add a little bit of extra 
if you want to like that so that also works pretty well I did find that I had to continue to dip quite often but just getting it from light to dark there or dark to light I should say and I feel like that needs a little bit of something else so I'm going to go in with a darker red colour so what have I got here Matter Carmine and you can just fill around and play with that until it looks the way you want it to but if you think of flowers in real life they kind of go from dark in the centre there and taper out to the lighter colour so yeah just like that and there's one done so with the the other with these pencils I found that some of the greens weren't the best but this is some um, obviously one that I've liked because that's a full size and I've used quite a bit of that so I'm going to do the same technique just dip the tip of the pencil directly into the water and get a little bit of color on there darkest towards where it would be underneath the edge of the flower and coming out same for this side you know when it's time to dip it in because it starts to just grab onto the paper a little bit more there we go and now I'll get my brush I am going to dry it off a little bit on my paper towel this time and just put clear water at the top and then tease that green up to the tip I don't know if you can see there where I've put it on but I think compared to watercolour paints these look a little grainy on the page but again definitely fine for purpose and it does create, create a nice look I haven't tried these on the good quality paper they may not do that on you know the good archers paper but I'm not sure so we'll see how that goes so I'm gonna let that one dry a little bit and let's do a lavender one here make sure I'm so I'll go in with a little bit of this color is magenta and I know that you can get these in different brands like you can see that I'm literally just scribbling that on to get the colour down yeah I believe uh, Faber-Castell they do some I don't know what the quality's like uh, as I said these are Derwent's and I'm I'm not quite sure whether you can get them in other brands and I'm sure depending on the brand there would be a price variation going to go in now with a little bit of light violet just run that around the edge I think too um, if you've got little children this would be a fun activity with them because they could kind of draw their pictures and then you could give them a little paintbrush and some water and they'd have a bit of fun with that I think now I'm just going to grab a bit of water I'm going to start at the tops bleeding down to the pinks and just moving literally just filling in and moving those paints around a little bit just to create that little bit of interest with the variance in colour 
I want to thank everybody that uh, hung around to watch the last watercolour that I did. And I had some really lovely feedback from a lot of you with regard to that. It seemed to be the people that were interested that hung around for it seemed to really enjoy it. So thanks for that. Thanks for watching. Just getting a little bit. And I hope that some of you have actually, well, I know some of you have given it a go because you've been in touch and you've told me about it. And uh, if you have painted anything and you would like me to have a look at it, which I would love to do, of course. And as I always say to people, you know, art is art. There's no right and wrong. If you like it, that's good enough. That's the post you're just heading off, so... Let's hope that's his last pass for the day because the dogs aren't too happy about him. Now I've obviously enjoyed this pencil. Look how little this one is. Dark violet. So I'm going to do the same thing with this one and just dip the tip in to get a little bit of, and I'm just running sort of a line out to indicate sort of this one isn't even sharp so I'm I'm trying to show you here that I'm really not being particular about this to create. You don't have to be particular to create something beautiful. And you know what? If it's beautiful to you, it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. So that's that one. Now I've got some... I will say that in these watercolours, some of the greens in my mind are a little crazy but um, let's do sort of a tealy green flower for the last one even though that does kind of look like a daffodil no she hasn't painted all right I'm going for it like I just said I want it to be a blue flower so that's what it'll be that leaf at the back there is probably going to be a bit darker but we'll get the color on it And you could do landscapes or anything with this. You could even do a combination of uh, pencils and watercolour. So if you got fancy, you could uh, colour it in, let the watercolour dry. This one is jade green. Let the watercolour dry and then go in and do a bit of pencil colouring in or even textures whatever you like mix mix your mediums live dangerously get my watercolour brush here just using the one brush the whole time oh that's pretty colour yeah I did notice that these don't um, bleed into each other as much as the watercolour paints do so if that's still a little bit wet and I do this it doesn't tend to run into it which is something that can happen with regular watercolours so um, yeah just slightly different there in what you can expect using them get more of that paint on but like I said, you just play around and you do whatever you want. Let's put a bit of a darker colour in there. The blues. And some teal. I even put a little bit of pink on the end of the tips of those flowers, but that's just colour. Rose matter. Yeah, let's put a bit of that in. I'm going to dip the tip in to draw a little bit of that into the centre just to give a little bit of interest. But yeah, these are definitely an alternative to paint. I don't like them as much as I do the watercolour paints, but it's fun to try something a little bit different every so often. 
these other leaves. I don't know if you can see there, um, but you can kind of see the graininess that comes out as opposed to when you're using watercolour, it gives it a much creamier finish on the on the end result. But there's a place for all textures. And if this is these are cheaper than buying watercolour paints and it's what you can afford to do your artwork, um, that's definitely the way to go. Just gonna get a little bit of water on those last ones. And what I did yesterday when I painted that little frog was I uh, let them dry and then I kind of outlined with uh, a black pen. So I'll get these in and I'll get to, I'll just turn the camera off for a little bit while it dries. Although I will say that one's pretty much dry. Um, I'll just let it dry and then I'll come back and do finished details so you can see I'm trying to be quick because I know I've already just done the video that you've all been watching and although it's nice to spend some time together it's probably not convenient for everybody to spend the whole day here watching me talk and paint so for the centers Copper Beach. I'll do it darker towards the bottom. I might put a yellow centre in that one. And then when I when it's dry, you can go over it with the black pen and put some speckles and things like that in it give it the, the look of the centre of a flower. Bit of a warmer tone in there. Again, as you can see, literally just scribbling it on because once you put the paint, the, the water on, it all blends out. That one. And a little bit of colour variation there with that one. Put a little dab of orange in the middle. These look nothing like her flowers, apart from the outline, of course. And that's perfectly fine. Alright, so that's those three done and as I say I'll just switch the camera off for a minute and let them dry and then I will outline them. Alright, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back. I've just been out and watered my seedlings that I've got going outside. So, just to finish off, I'm using my mono drawing pencil and I'm just going to add a little bit of detail. So I don't like to do solid lines as I said before so now I'm just going to sort of go over the petals as they lie. Just flicking the pen around giving it a little bit of detail. Just follow the lines that um, Dana had on the page to begin with if you've bought this book and I realized before that I didn't finish my random thought as happens sometimes and I was going to say that if you have had a go at this and you would like to show me what you've painted uh, just tag me on Instagram and that way uh, I will be able to have a look at your creations What you can do in the centre there, just do some random little squiggles to indicate the little seed pods that, all the little stamens and things like that in the centre of the flower. And we'll do the leaves. 
and the veins. Just have to be precise. Just getting a little bit of detail in there. Just makes it look a little bit more realistic and defines them a bit when I say realistic so that you can see that it's a flower definitely not going for realism for some lines to make it stand up from the page and when I finish this at the end of the video I will put a close-up photo of it. The other thing I'll say about the pencils is with watercolour, when they dry, they fade by about, I'm going to say about 30%. The pencils do not fade anywhere near as much. The colour stays a lot more vibrant. And I think in that instance, that's where they would be good if you wanted to combine the two like the watercolor paints and the pencils if you were looking for something with a little bit more depth of color that would um, definitely give you it the other problem is with uh, pencils is I don't get to do what I like and that's the splattering part I really like that part but I'm going to put a few dots in the middle there and as I say once uh, I'm finished you'll be able to see it a bit better when I take a photo and put that on the end but as you can see when you add the black lines and you don't need to add a lot a little here a little there it just makes them jump from the page a bit more and like I said I think this would be a great activity for kids I think they they could use them in their colouring books as well although that might be a little bit of an, a treat thing because even though they're not as expensive as watercolour paints they're still not you know a 99 cent packet of colouring pencils this would be nice if you had um, some cardboard and you wanted to make some little gift cards for friends or I make my own Christmas cards every year and uh, you could use them to make your Christmas cards if you do that sort of thing. There we go, and that's pretty much it. You could keep adding as much detail as you wanted. But that is it, my friends. That is the finished product. And as you can see, quite a good result. So... If you're not keen on the watercolour, try the watercolour pencils. Thanks for watching.